Good morrow. Good eve, dear ladles and jelly spoons. If you can't tell by my devil's trap, I am my own version of the Joker for Halloween. And I didn't go anywhere exciting. <laughs> I just got dressed. Story time video on Halloween will not be uploaded on Halloween, but at least it's festive. I'm not drunk. I'm in character. It will be a paranormal story time video. Kind of hard to get out of character. I could be drunk. We could fix that. Then we'll have a Joker Jack Sparrow. Well, I've had a lot of experiences my entire life. The apartment that I lived in with my dad, it, he lived in it since, um, I think 1968 until 2014. A lot of history. The apartment I grew up in, it had an interesting energy to it. When my mom was with my dad, when I was a child, she saw things. Not like scary, creepy things. My dad never felt threatened. I never felt threatened growing up. When my dad became ill, and it, it was before the cirrhosis really took over. It makes you like a mean drunk. It makes you, when your liver fails, all of the toxins go to your brain. And it's like dealing with somebody with very, very bad dementia. Before that happened, and it was just little things, little memory loss and his sight kind of going. I started to get the feeling there was something there. You see, when my dad was healthy, I always felt safe always felt safe. If I had a nightmare of something chasing me, I'd wake up and he was out in the living room and I could hear him. This started happening over a period of time. I'm sensitive to things, spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call them. They don't bother me. Never have. Uh, sometimes I see them. Most of the time I feel them or I get a glimpse of them in such a way that it's a memory from a dream you can't remember. You know, that kind of memory. It's like, didn't I dream that? That kind of image, that's what I get. Oftentimes, they just leave me alone. They'll spook you when they want your attention. They don't mean to. And, and if they do, it's just acknowledge them and go, okay, I get it, you're here. Thanks, sorry, apologies, you know, and stop. At least for me, I, I don't have, I don't have problems with negative energies. They tend to stay away from me. That's a whole nother video. Except this time, there was this thing and it would, it wouldn't happen at night. It would happen when I would take a nap during the day. And it wasn't sleep paralysis, because I know the difference. I can actually wake my body up when it happens. So sleep paralysis doesn't work on me. But I would, whenever I would lucid dream, and it happens a lot. I have very vivid dreams. Some of the lucid dreams that I couldn't control, that felt very real. I knew the moment I stepped foot into those dreams that it was coming. And I can't explain it. I never saw it. I just, I knew what, I knew it was male. I knew that it was it was very big and it was dark and it wasn't friendly. Not my kind of friendly. It would chase me. I would feel it like scrape at my side and I'd wake up with an ache. You know, at first it was superficial moments in a dream where it would get me and I'd wake up. And when my dad became more ill, there were, it, it started happening more I would wake up face down in my bed and I would try to move and I couldn't, which sounds like sleep paralysis. No, I literally put my hands out like this cause I used to sleep on my stomach and I pushed up and I pushed my body up and something pushed me back down. And I slept in a very old bunk, bunk bed from like the seventies, like the real thick wood wooden plates and it was it was short too. I hated that bed. So if you sat up too quick, crack your head on it. Like you, I couldn't sit up this like this. There was nothing there. 
that I could see, but it pushed me back down and I had to struggle and struggle and I could, it's like when you're trying to wake up from a nightmare and you can, when you're so tired and you're like trying to get out of it and you feel this, this thing pulling at the back of your mind, pulling you back down like you're gonna drown. It did that a lot. It started doing it more. It got pretty nasty. It did some pretty nasty things, but it was in a way warning me that he couldn't protect me anymore because it started getting violent. This thing started getting, my, like my dad couldn't protect me anymore. He was getting sick. There was one dream I had that was, <sighs> I dreamt that, I know I wrote it down in my blog somewhere. I could probably read it for, to you guys like verbatim. But what I remember, the dream consisted of, I was home, but I knew it wasn't home. I knew it was the dream home. It wasn't, there's different, levels of dreamscape for me and this place was too harsh it was too real and i knew it was bad and i had to get i i had to get to my dad and i remember uh, suddenly in the hallway and it was a very small hallway where we lived like literally uh, not even five feet from my room to my dad's room to the bathroom kind of thing it was, it was small it was a small like old apartment i remember i was in the hallway and I was looking into the darkness and I was calling out my dad's name. And I was just saying, not my dad's name, I was calling out dad. And I could barely hear him like, I'm up, I'm here, but it was so far away. And I remember I turned, I was just confused at this point, but I turned to my door and it wasn't my door anymore. It was, a shadow that consumes the darkness. And out of this shadow, it morphed into view. And it was this big wooden door, big mahogany wooden door. And you could hear a baby crying. It was horrible. And I didn't want to get close to it. It was a huge door. And then I realized that wasn't a baby. And the sound just changed and it was, it was awful. I, I can't even describe to you what it is. Maybe if I sat down and tried to write it out, there's no words. And as soon as I realized that wasn't a baby, that wasn't my room, I needed to go because the door began to breathe. It was breathing. And it, it was about to come out and I turned and I was screaming. I'm like, dad, get up. I, I, dad, get up. And he's like, I'm up. I could hear him. He's like, he used to call me bird. That was his nickname. He's like, bird, I'm up. And I remember hearing something behind me and I shot up and I almost cracked my skull because it was really low <laughs> in my bunk bed and made of wood. And I got up. And I could feel something like at the back of my neck, like something trying to pull me back down, trying to pull me back onto my bed, trying to get me to go back to sleep, trying to make me weak again. And I'm like, nope. I got up, I opened my door and I was like, dad, dad, are you up? And I realized it was a small living room. We walk out, his chair was right. You guys, the way it's visualized here, okay? So for your view, chairs here, TVs here kind of thing. So I walked out into the living room and the TV was on, and it was just a little past 3 a.m. I walked up to my dad. He was like, you okay? I was just kind of standing there. I'm like, I had a bad dream. Um, how long have you been up? And he's like, mm, I got up about 20 minutes ago. No, apparently my father was kind of jolted awake. Like something told him to get up. Me and my dad, we had that a lot. But uh, as he got sick, he couldn't protect me anymore. And that house used to feel, or that apartment used to feel so safe. So safe, I mean, it was home. And then one day it was over. So that's my just one paranormal story time video for you on All Hallows Eve with my crazy hair and my scars. Thank you all so very much for watching. 
and I hope you had a safe Halloween and I promise that this will be a weekly thing. <laughs> Things have been hard. And on that note, my lovelies, I will bid the end on. Adieu. Do you ever feel as so though you're not you? Joker and the Jack Sparrow put together is not a good idea. Rum. Don't drink. It's bad for you. Drink up, me hearties, yo ho. Look, it's like Batman. Uh. Oh, Edgar. My friend. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more. Oh!